Hey friends, so I've got kind of a funny story to tell you all, but uh, this is going to be another one of my illustrious walk and talks, so uh, let's go for a brief walk around the neighborhood, shall we? Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, I wanted to tell you a little story from my past because it has some impact on some things that are going to happen to me in the future. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk. Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these amazing businesses and what they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I have down in the description of this video. And special thanks to non-business friends of the channel, Johnny Howard, Lane Wachinski, and Pekka Pekkonen. Thank you so very much for your support for my work and my mission. So it is a glorious Saturday morning here in uh, Tacoma Park, right on the border of Washington, D.C., where I live. Um, we have gotten so much rain lately, and it is such a relief to have it be so nice out now. So I have definitely dropped several videos lately um, that have been about big topics uh, in the flow arts, and especially stuff around fire festivals and taking big swings in terms of uh, making statements about things happening at the fire festivals that I would like to see change. And I kind of needed a week to do something a little bit lighter, something uh, a little bit more chill, because, um, you know, writing those videos, having those discussions, that eats up some spoons, and uh, sometimes <laughs> you just want to have a chill week, you know? So to that end, um, this past week, my friend Vanna, Aristocat, on uh, Instagram uploaded a really interesting meme where she was kind of telling her backstory as a flow artist. Um, I've mentioned before that, uh, ironically enough, like I get asked this question all the time of when I started uh, spending poi. I don't actually know the answer to that question because, um, you know, it, it happens sometime between Burning Man 2006 and uh, my friend's wedding in June of uh, 2007, because I know I spun fire at their wedding. Um, and in between there, I, I just don't know, because at the time, I didn't realize that information was going to turn out to be important. <laughs> but in watching that video, it made me realize that there is another auspicious anniversary in my past that I would like to talk about, because it's actually come up uh, relatively frequently for me lately, especially in therapy, and it is something that I've been kind of working on recognizing and accepting about myself. So this takes us all the way back to when I was a teeny tiny Drex of only five years old, growing up in Boulder, Colorado. And I was in kindergarten, and this was the, f what, this was the first of many businesses that I started. As a little kindergartner, uh, I was putting together these uh, drawings of dinosaurs because I loved dinosaurs, and I got it into my head that I was going to sell them for one cent a piece, and that I was going to give some drawings away to a few friends for free in exchange for them uh, talking my drawings up to other people in the class and getting them interested in buying their own. So like, at the age of five, I somehow understood the basics of like advertising and marketing, and this still strikes me as rather precocious. It's also a piece of myself that I kind of forgot about for many years. There's a lot of reasons for this, not the least of which because there was a person in a position of authority in my life who decided to tell a five-year-old child that their business plan was terrible, and uh, that kind of put me off of it for a good long time. But I did come back around, and it's kind of become an interesting theme of my life that I have been both a very creative person as well as a creative person that's always found a way to create sustainable businesses around the arts that I get into. You know, before I graduated from high school, I was getting paid to draw comic books. Later on when I got into music, I managed the books for my band, and while we were never the most popular band in the Front Range region, uh, we were certainly one of the most profitable. We made money every single year that we were running, and as I've been able to gather talking with other bands both before, during, and after, 
That's a pretty rare feat. And of course, when I took up Flow Arts, I tried several different business models to try and make it sustainable for myself. Everything from, you know, teaching in-person classes to uh, finding ways of making my channel pay for itself to selling contact poi. You know, it, every single step of the way, I have found a way to merge together entrepreneurship and art. And I'm realizing more and more that that's kind of a rare combination for a lot of people. And it's also something that kind of took me a long time to accept about myself, not just because there, once again, were people in positions of authority around me growing up who made it seem like a bad thing that I wanted to start businesses as a little kid, but also, too, because we so frequently think about art and entrepreneurship as being opposites or as being in competition with each other. And in my life, at least, there's never been a time when they have been in competition with each other. And don't get me wrong, I do feel for people that do struggle with those pieces, whether it be not wanting to have to do the terrible work of marketing one's work or thinking about how to produce work that is going to be, you know, accessible enough that other people are going to want to pay you for it. Um, I really do feel for people that have those struggles. I'm just not one of them. You know, I've always looked at the art that I produce as not just being something that is creatively fulfilling for me, but also as being something that can fulfill a need for other people as well. To be perfectly frank, that's part of what I love about it. I love seeing the impact that the work that I produce has on others. Um, and, you know, it's weird because <laughs> sometimes it's very lonely working within that context because I feel like nobody else gets it on that level. And, uh, you know, I can talk with people about, you know, tech, about dance, what have you, but talking with them about kind of the unique space that you occupy when, you know, you are putting together art and commerce, there's a really, really small pool of people for whom that is a conversation that they're either A, prepared or, uh, you know, be able to engage with. And, you know, given how much being anti-corporate, anti-commercial, anti-capitalist is so very integrated into flow culture right now, it's also something that I sometimes feel a, a little, you know, shameful about or I'm kind of afraid to bring up. You know, not only is it one of those things that there's, it feels like there's few people I can talk to about it, but also, too, that the mere idea of merging together entrepreneurship and art is something that sometimes feels like it carries a certain stigma with it. I think a lot of creative people struggle to kind of find ways of living authentically, of, you know, being able to express themselves as creative individuals in a culture that very frequently does not make that very easy. And, you know, I, I have that struggle, too. But I think also, too, I've struggled a bit with recognizing this particular piece of myself as a creative individual, of recognizing that, you know what, those instincts that drive me to, you know, want to make a flow arts channel pay for itself so I can do it full time, that, you know, want to find ways of getting people access to things that are going to improve their lives, that that is a thing that I should also kind of be proud of and think of as being as authentic as any of the art that I produce as well. I think a big part of why that's on my mind lately is that I'm in the process of making some pivots in the way that I look at my position in the flow arts world and the things that I want to see existing in the flow arts world, the relationships that I want to see people cultivating with each other and the ways that we build our community. These are going to be some pretty big swings, and there's no guarantee that they're going to land. But I'm still excited for them, and also a little terrified. And I think that as I'm approaching those big swings, and especially kind of coping with the fear associated with them, one of those things that it is helpful for me to remind me about myself is that this is nothing new. That, you know, every step of my life, I have tried to find creative ways to solve problems sustainably and that it's never really been about like necessarily making money or uh, you know trying to be popular or anything like that. More often than not it's just about wanting to see the things in the world that I think would make it an awesome place 
and working on solving the problems that are going to be involved in doing that. And that's something that I should be proud of. Yeah. So today I'm taking a breather, reflecting on the past, thinking about how it's going to inform my future, and giving myself some permission to recognize that there are some things that make me special in this regard, and that uh, not to be afraid of the ways in which that drives me to keep on making changes, you know? So thanks for listening to me ramble about my history as an entrepreneur and uh, how this is going to have an impact on my future with the Flow World too. Did you get anything out of this video? Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to keep the conversation going, and of course to help other people find this video. This video would not be possible without the kind support of all of these wonderful people right here. These are my Flow patrons on Patreon. The people who have believed in the work that I'm doing enough to help support it financially. Thank you one and all for your wonderful support, as well as the support of the people listed down in the description. If you're watching and you're not currently a supporter and you would like to become a supporter, if you would like to help me out on my mission of bringing flow arts and poise spinning to the wider world and helping people connect with their brains and their bodies, you can do that by heading on over to patreon.com slash directsfactorpoi and signing up. There you can get access to a whole host of awesome rewards and best of all, you will be directly involved in making sure that I can keep on making these videos and making the impact that I want to in the world. So go check that out, please and thank you. Are you interested in hearing me ramble on more about a variety of other topics, both personal as well as in the flow arts and sometimes both at the same time? I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to a playlist of some other video blogs that I have done down in the description as well as up on screen if you are watching on YouTube. Make sure to get outside. I hope it is as beautiful where you live as it is where I live right now. Uh, make sure that you get some flow in you. It's good for your brain and your body. And I'll see you with a new video on Wednesday. Peace.